Hey guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. Sorry about the shaky hands. It's only just barely 36 degrees out right now. I just got the trailer loaded up. We're going to go tractor hunting. It's about an hour away. And it's a two-fur deal. One is a rolling chassis that obviously looks as if it doesn't have a motor in it. And the other is some sort of black Murray. Looks as if it's a hydro drive. Um, I've actually had really good luck selling hydro black Murrays in the past. So... We'll see what this one is for condition. Um, the guy said it's free. Just come get it out of his yard. And we'll see what happens. Freebies tend to go and be hit or miss. They're either gold mines or they're scrap metals. So let's go see what we got today. All right, so as you guys know, normally I try and get you a clip of where it is that we found the machine. But when I showed up, that guy was gun ho He had this little MTD tractor out there, and he was mud mowing for all he was worth in order to be able to pull these out for me. Um, I really appreciate it, dude. That was awesome. Um, it, it really was cool to go and run into somebody that was willing to get on their lawn tractor and just rip up their own lawn to be able to get these out. So let's take a look at what we got. All right, so not every tractor hunt is going to end up one of those glorious, I take it home and I fire it up in five seconds and I'm driving around the yard. And the reason why this is not one of those is because there are bolts, cotter pins, and stuff missing out of both of these machines and an engine. Um, the engine is not bolted down in this. Supposedly it was running a year ago, but... This is one of those situations where the parts make up for the condition, okay? So what we have here, we got a deck with good spindles in it and halfway decent blades. If we re-grease the bearings or we put some brand new bearings in there at a cost of about, oh, probably 20 bucks or so, we can get 50 to $75 for that deck. Both of the back tires on this are actually in good condition, which is really rare on an older style yard machine like this. And those yard machine rims are the keyed rims that are weird oval shaped. Usually tires on the back of these look more like this, not like this. So that whole rear end with decent tires right outright, I can sell in the local market for about 50 bucks. If I pull these tires off and I do some research and find the exact model number on that transaxle, I can probably sell it for about 40 to 50 on eBay. Now this unit here, Murray's are getting harder to find parts for. And I'm not gonna lie, I bought, I got this today. I didn't buy it, I got it for free. I got this today more for the motor than I did the chassis. The reason being is because something was hit with this to the point it snapped the entire bottom of the spindle off and I can see in underneath that a bunch of the actuator stuff in underneath um, for bringing the belt around is all bent up and stuff. So most likely this is going to get too costly to rebuild it as a cutting machine but as far as building it in order to make it a project for something not a mud mower but another project that I have an idea for it's a hydro rear end it's one of the larger ones we can see inside here he says that it did work here's the plate And it's got the foot actuator pedal, which makes it really nice for driving these. If you haven't seen a Murray with one of these, um, Craftsman decided to start doing this in the 2000s, I believe. This is reverse, and this is forward. And it auto brakes. When it comes up to the center here, it automatically brakes. That's why it is on these Murrays with the large hydros. There is this clutch brake here which allows you to lock in your brake in underneath. So everything is kind of there, but like I said, apparently his goal was to take this and put it into here. Because he hit it so hard, he decided himself it wasn't worth rebuilding. So what's in it? I see red. 
All right, so we've got a 17 horsepower twin. And like I said, he claims it was running. So about a year ago. But everything is kind of randomly disconnected under here. There's some more random wiring. Some more random wiring. And some more random wiring to sort out. I'm going to bet one of these is probably the carb solenoid if it has one. So, we will get this rolled off. We'll see if this fires up. If it does, cool beans. And we'll go from there. So in the past on a few hydro rear ends that had motors missing or the motor was junk, I've declared the rear end was good but the motor never ran. And some of you eagle-eyed people have gotten a hold of me in the past, so I'm gonna show you this. What I do is I take whatever it is for the hydro drive, in this case, we're clamping it down into reverse. I lift one tire off and take it off. I leave the other one on the ground so that it ties up the differential on one side, which means if I take a drill and I put it down here, I should be able to spin it up and see this axle move. Now to be clear, that doesn't tell me that the drive is perfect, but what it does tell me is it's able to build pressure, that it still has oil inside of it, and that it's able to at least engage and kick the tire over. So, I'm gonna say that that is most likely a decent rear end. Now, if I was gonna sell it to somebody, obviously I would stick it in something that has a running motor and I would hook it up and I'd see if it actually worked under power. But, as far as being able to test it, that's how I do it. There's your tech tip for this video. All right, so before we fire this up, I'd like to go and show you this filter. It definitely is clogged up from cutting somewhere that had a bunch of stuff. I'd also like to show you this. This is a Bic pen. Most likely the gas filter was here. It probably snapped off because what happens with this chassis is the filter gets bent that direction and they snap in the cold and stuff. So this is a big pen, most likely to replace the fuel filter. And up here, we've still got a bunch of caca that we're going to clean out right now. Just the usual type stuff. And on one of these Briggs Twins, it naturally sits with the choke closed until you hit the valve, uh, hit the lever underneath. See? And that lever is... Let me get the camera to move. That lever is this one right here. That's your choke. All right, so we got our Gatorade gas. We're gonna pour a little bit down. Not much, just enough to liven it up. And the kill wire, I believe, is already disconnected by the previous owner, so we're just going to give it some love. Oh, almost. Almost again. Apparently, I'm going to have to hold that choke closed. Okay. A little more Gatorade gas. Hold the choke closed. And let's try it again. All right, so there we go. That's gonna be the end of this tracker hunt video. 
Those carburetors are notorious for doing some really stupid things, so most likely I'm not going to bother playing with this motor until I can outright just order a carburetor. If you need one of these carbs, I'll post a link down below for you. It's one of the ones that has the fuel pump built into the side of it. They tend to be pretty expensive, so the link will be down below. Otherwise than that, we got a good running engine. We got plenty of parts sitting behind me on the trailer. We should be able to make our money out of this over the course of time. Thank you for your support. Hope your hunts go just as good as this one.